Hi YouTube, this is Three Onion here with another episode of Universe Sandbox Squared. So in this first round, I have the classic simulation of two galaxies colliding with each other. So let's see what the game simulates, simulates, and just watch it unfold. So they are as if two giant clouds have collided with each other and released million upon million of stars and systems and who knows what else. And it's interesting because the core of the galaxies have collided, leaving the outer rings, leaving the outer rings um, well, almost intact in their shape. So in today's episode we'll be start by focusing on the um, uh, magnetic influences of the magnetic field of Earth. So, as you know, magnetic field is generated, some believe, by the movement of the iron core of our own planet. And this is believed to obviously create the magnetosphere, which is well represented in here, and is relative to the Sun. And so, Aurora Borealis, which I thought the game displayed, but apparently it's not displaying at this moment. I don't know why, but um, so um, Aurora Borealis appears on the north and south pole, and I mean north and south uh, magnetic poles, but they can uh, extend to um, influence a wider area, not obviously restricted to the North Pole, North and South Pole, I mean, auroras have been seen very rarely, but they can be seen in the United Kingdom and even southern in France and even in the Iberian Peninsula up here, almost like uh, 45 degrees of latitude. So, um, obviously this is in extremely rare occasions. Um, Aurora Borealis are formed due to the interaction of solar wind particles, of solar wind particles, yes, originated in the Sun, and that when they encounter planet Earth, they collide with the magnetosphere and are redirected to the poles because that's where the magnetic field is weaker, it's where it concentrates. This allows the charged particles emitted from the Sun and the interstellar space to collide with the upper atmosphere of our planet in these regions, thus allowing for a beautiful spectacular of lights. So Aurora Borealis appeared due to a weaker influence of the magnetic field on both Earth poles, which correspond to magnetic poles as well. I mean, they are diverted 12 degrees, I think, yeah? Magnetic pole is diverted 12 degrees in relationship to the true, um, true, um, in relationship to the true uh, rotational um, angle, but um, they more or less correspond. So, magnetic, the magnetosphere has a huge impact, not only in creating beautiful, <laughs> rendering vi beautiful visuals, but as well and more importantly, protecting the, the most of the atmosphere from deadly uh, cosmic rays and um, other charged particles. Indeed, it is believed that the only reason planet Earth has retained its atmosphere is due to a stronger magnetosphere in relationship to Mars, which is believed to have in the past maintain a thicker atmosphere than it has today. I mean, Earth's atmosphere today is really low compared to the Earth. As you can see, it's... I don't even know, I don't even know how many zeros it has, but um, as you can see, it's really inferior to the one on the planet Earth. This is possibly... I mean, several theories suggest that it's because Mars... Mars um, nowadays has no magnetosphere or has a really reduced one. So, so um, the, this lack of magnetosphere is what is believed to have eroded the, at the Martian atmosphere away and possibly killed any life that may or may not have existed on this planet. So magnetosphere, despite not being one of our main concerns, is one of the main reasons that have uh, created an habitable planet.
So, be thanks for its existence and, um, well, be thanks for it, <laughs> I guess. So, that's our first episode. Um, let's see now some simulation of, I don't know, crashing moons, for example. So, we can try to change. Let's try to travel transform Mars. Let's crash. Let's crash some moons that have water in them. Like Europa, I think Europa is water. Let's crash them into Mars. Let's crash them into Mars and see if we can get. Oh, okay. Yes, water. So we gain it by crashing Europa, which is a water moon. I mean, frozen water moon. But uh, you get my point. So we obtained 0.6% water on Mars. Now let's reduce. The, um, the surface temperature to something more friendly and see if we can get some oceans to emerge. Well, as you can see, we have we have gained some frozen ice caps and the water seems to be melting now, but the temperature is the temperature is decreasing substantially. So we have yeah, we have acquired this strange shaped uh, Mars object and you can see the impact crater in here, I mean, look at this. This is where Europa collided, this is where Europa has planted all the water on this planet. So what we're going to try to do now is try to warm up this planet by giving it a thicker atmosphere. So let's go where's the atmosphere, atmosphere, let's give it an atmosphere that is half of that of planet Earth, so 0.5 Earths. And let's see if this has any impacts on the temperature, I don't think so. So maybe we can try changing other parameters, like let's see where they are. Like, uh, oh, okay, this, <laughs> the climate simulation has just rendered other thing. But I guess now the planet has too much water and there's no land visible. So I think 0.5% water is probably too much. So maybe we're gonna reduce a little bit artificially. Let me see. Wait, cut. 0.38%, still a bit too much. 288%. Okay, 0.07%, let's put it at 0.05% water, maybe a little less, that's 360, yeah, this seems like a good, a good proportion of land to water, I mean, it's mostly water still, but uh, now let's get, take, take it a little bit more, 2, let's put it at 2. Let me see how many, what's the proportion on, well, we got a lot of fragments now. What's the proportion on planet Earth? 0 0.02, so let's do something similar in Mars, 0 0.02, yeah. It's kind of, what the fuck happened? Why is this heating up? Oh, a fragment collided? Don't tell me a fragment has just collided. That would have been... Let's just cool it down a little bit. So I just realized what the problem was. When I put the atmosphere mass, and I said that um, 1 was the atmosphere mass of planet Earth. No, I was mistaken. This is the weight of planet Earth. So obviously the, atmos the Martian atmosphere cannot weigh the same as a planet. So I put something similar to planet Earth. I went and looked what the mass was on planet Earth, and it was something like this. So um, I put uh, something similar. And as expected, the temperature has dropped almost instantly to a temperature that is um, a comfortable 14.7 degrees Celsius. So, and we have a 61 degree greenhouse effect. So this is a comfortable planet at the moment. It still has its reddish glow. That can only be changed if we change the atmosphere composition, and I don't think we can do this in this program. So, so we get Mars with 
a lot of water, a lot of ice as well, some land, not too much, and the reddish, the characteristic reddish glow. So we have uh, an index in here, which I believe is the yeah, Earth similarity, and we got 0.836%. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty big uh, Earth similarity, and uh, probably right now we can uh, see some life on the planet and see how it develops, and uh, perhaps and uh, perhaps uh, just see, check it out in a few million years. Oh, and by the way, we still have to get a magnetosphere or else the atmosphere will, like what is believed to happen, happen in the past, the atmosphere will slowly be eroded away by solar winds and cosmic radiation. So, with the, these remarks, I end today's episode of Universe Sandbox 2. I hope you have liked, if you like, please subscribe and or like the video. And just a final remark, you can see here the crater, it has created a huge dent on the planet. So thank you for watching, this was 3 Onion Leads Watery Mars, thank you.